All right, this is the beginning of how I secure the towers to the bottom of the bucket. Cut some holes in the bottom of these couplings. This is a rain spout couplings for um, uh, a little bit of circulation as the air stone is going to be in the bottom here. Then it'll be pulling, bubbles will be going up and it'll help just circulate everything around. Just like the way these little things filter in small tanks. I'm going to glue this with some goop. This stuff is amazing. And let it dry for a day. And then we'll start painting. If you're making this at home, I uh, did the math and everything for you. It's 2 and 13 sixteenths from the outside of this to here. That I'll put you dead center. And then glue it. Now for the cap of the tower, the hose comes up, I'm drill the hole, the hose will come up, and it'll go back to the center where the sprayer is at. These are just garden sprayers. I'm trying this one this time. Large full circle spinner. Because the last time I used This when it has little teeth, it makes it spray all around. So well, there we go. And you can see it gets clogged up with the rock wool fibers that make their way into the water. Then you have to periodically clean it. So this one is a little bit different. It just shoots the water out and it's just at an angle and makes it spin. So I think this will be a lot less maintenance. So we'll drill a hole. This will be in the center inside, and then the tube will come up right here. All right, this is all put together, or somewhat put together. That was 11 64th for the center, and one quarter inch for the quarter inch tubing, obviously. I'm going to put the hose side over here so it'll come up and it gives it enough to arc or bend without crimping itself. Alright, I'm going to do the other one. The next thing I want to show you is a piece that I could not find so I had to manufacture myself. From the spigot, you're going to want one for your water hose but we need to always feed the, uh, the pot so it never runs out of water. These are the three pieces I had to use. I'm going to take this, it will connect into here. We'll cut this piece off, the elbow, and then we will add this to where our tubing will connect to it and go to our solenoid. It will be mounted on the top of the bucket lid. Those are the pieces I used. After a little persuasion and cutting the tip off, or the elbow off, I got it in there. I had to use a 0.49 drill bit or 12.6 millimeter to get it started. Just held it in place like this and used a ratchet to secure it. On the safe side, I'm going to take this plumber's goop and the attachment here and go around the inside to make sure that's not going to leak or drip. I put some on the threads also, I didn't mention that, when I was screwing them in to act as Teflon tape, kind of. Alright, we're almost done with this part. So now I have cut holes, centered them to the pipe. Cut them a little bit smaller so they stay snug. And I've also put marks for the mesh pots if these people want extra for spots there. 
or you can grow bigger plants down here and use bungee cords to hold them to the tower um, all right moving right along and uh, these will be drain plugs go into the bottom of the bucket roughly about like that in case you need to drain it I've recently ordered a aquarium siphon that will clean the gravel that's what I'm going to start using to siphon this stuff out of the bottom the dead bugs floating around that sink to the bottom and random organic matter I think it'll work a lot better than the drain plug the next thing you're going to want to do is paint your bucket black that'll block the sunlight out and stop algae from growing inside it's still grow a little bit but not as bad and then after I paint it black I add a light coat doesn't matter what color I got a, a light tan cream color here that'll reflect some of the sunlight heat so it doesn't warm up too much a couple coats uh, do just fine all right now I've taken taken a chalk line divided it into four sections and popped lines from one end of the pipe to the other it's pretty bright out here I don't know if you can see that then I've measured down 12 inches separating where the uh, pods are going to be and then I alternated I started one at 6 inches and then the next one was at 12 that way they are kind of staggered down the pipe and I've taken a little piece a little scrap piece I've measured out 3 inches in the center and I take it and put it on my chalk line on my mark and then I mark it off at 3 inches and draw a line now I have a centered centered line spaced out properly <clears throat> and this is just a test run of how it's going to work I use a little heat gun to heat the pipe up and then I have a pipe that's two and a half inches it's the same diameter as the uh, the baskets here and once it's hot heat it up push it down in there to kind of get the shape of it not too far or the basket will just fall in and you'll have to mess with it a little bit it's pretty tight the first one I did I did them like three and a half inches this one is two and a half I think it works a little bit snugger I was getting problems with the water trickling out the side so I still need a little more practice with this size but I like how it rolls in right here I think it should stop the water from running down the outside of the pipe and you losing your nutrients to evaporation and splashing out well, there are the pipes or excuse me the buckets they're all finished for right now I'm gonna start marking I got a lot of work to do after the heat gun and sticking the other stick or pipe in it you have to do each one individually make sure they fit test it with a basket had a couple of, a little rip right here but it'll still work I use once it's heated up you can just slide this in there easy give it a couple seconds pull it out and set your basket in there to make sure that it'll fit and not fall all the way through and if it's hot enough it'll form to the basket just wanted to go over something real quick about the bottom part that'll be in the bucket so these are flared out they'll hold the the basket these I didn't flare them out these two right here will be 
level with the bucket so you can kind of see what's going on in there maybe add nutrients from right there and these two down here it's bright today these will catch the air bubbles from the uh, air stone that's right here and help uh, get them out here to the rest of the plants that are around the perimeter of the bucket now I've got the motors finally and I found these shark bite adapters the Lowe's that screw onto these half inch threads male threads and I also found a good deal on this palm pond pump hose it's 20 feet for about eight bucks it's really flexible it's half inch and it fits on here probably have to put a zip tie on it because I don't have the shark bite adapter or connectors it was round up wound up in a oval shape so I cut out a piece that's been pretty much bent but when I drill the hole in the bucket it'll flex easy and won't crimp itself so I'm gonna get these holes drilled and glue these motors down well here are the two buckets glued together they're glued with the pump and the hoses they're not glued together and while I was waiting on that to dry I went ahead and drilled a hole on the side because it, this hose wouldn't flex as much as the other hose I was using I still want to give it a try because it's black and it won't allow the algae to grow in the tube but when I got to the end I was kind of perplexed on what to do because I had the same problem down there but I added a smaller hose a clear piece so we can you can kind of see the state of it just by popping the lid off and the, another piece of silicone that slides into this one and some air hose tubing for a fish aquarium and the black hose will stay in the column and won't fall back down <clears throat> so when I have this at the correct spot you can wrap wrap this around and fit in there nicely and it won't interfere with the spray too much but it still give you the ability to pop it off maybe clean this thing out or switch another one and you still got a pretty good amount of flow coming up here so right now I'm using the same one the same size tubing on the my setup is a pretty good amount of flow but the algae is growing inside the tubing and it's slowing it down hence the black tubing and then you got a little clear spot to check see what's going on and uh, that's that we'll get started on the next step all right here they are pretty much complete i designed and printed a little relay box there all the electronics Pretty much the little bit that there is is inside of that. Right now I have the air pump on. Let's plug up the pump. Pump is on. It's super quiet. Just enough to keep it wet. Here's the one that I made last year. It's doing all right. The pump went out the other day and pretty much killed the tomato plants. But I don't have nowhere near as much as I was growing in it last year. But the last thing, uh, I printed these little filters. They go on the bottom of the, the hose that's inside the bucket this hose and this will go inside the cap so it'll go on the top of the cap and the sprayer is right in the middle that way it sprays on this and it drops straight down the column instead of running down the sides it'll minimize the the stuff running down the outside like that well, that's pretty much it thanks for watching if you got any uh, ideas or comments on how to improve it I'd be really interested to know what you have to say right, thanks again for watching so here she is finished with some little asparagus some tomato plants that will probably get transplanted later
There she is running. About a week and a half old, two weeks, got some chives growing.